files that you can then import into Cricut, and then we're gonna manipulate them to turn them into pattern pieces. Um, you can't always convert a PDF to SVG, as you might have found out. So this is just another workaround for you as you learn your way through uh, pattern conversion and using your Cricut or any uh, cutting software for that matter. But that's what I use, so that's what I'm gonna show you. But I imagine that they are similar similar approaches. So like before, I'm going to use my thank you pouch as an example here. So I'm not using somebody else's proprietary file. And you're going to open up that file. There's a new one, by the way, that should have been sent to you or provided to you otherwise. And you're going to print page 29 and page, page 30. And you're going to print to PDF as we did before. If this all sounds like great to you, please see my previous YouTube videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit select file from my computer. I have it on my desktop. It's called thank you pages 29 to 30 and you hit open. You're going to select over here where it says convert to. You're going to click on image and then JPEG. Okay, a little different than before. And then you're going to click the convert button. And then it's going to create a zip file for you that will have the two pages. Now these pages contain a total of three pattern pieces. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. I already had them downloaded to my desktop. I'm not going to do it again right now. It's just to save some time here. So, but you know how to do that. So when you download the zip file to your desktop, Go ahead and extract the two JPEG files and have them to your desktop so that we can be ready for the next step, which is using Cricut. All right, so I'm going to close out of this file and we'll open up Cricut. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to click Upload and we're going to upload our first page which is on our desktop and is called page 2930-1. Yours will be called something different, I'm sure. And you'll see it comes on to the little preview screen here. It looks nice. Um, what you might notice is that there's a one inch test box that's actually on the pattern piece. That's great when you're printing, but when you're creating SVGs, it goes away. So we'll have a little workaround for that. Um, so just a, a point of reference about the one inch box. Every pattern piece needs to have that or you need to know the measurements. Both are ideal. So we're going, going to go ahead and click on this once and we're going to hit the complex option here and then hit continue. And the first thing we're going to do is under here where it says manual, click the little magic wand and then click once on this picture and that gets rid of all of the background and from background color if you will but it's the beginning of an SVG file and then we're going to we don't have to but we're going to do it now so you can learn more about the tools within Cricut and that is that we're going to get rid of this little footer information down here so you're going to click once on this pop tool and you're going to drag on the corner down to there so that we don't have any of the footer in there then hit apply and continue. Now we have what looks like two perfect pattern pieces, but they are far from perfect. That's okay, we'll get there. So go ahead and click on this once and hit upload. Click on this once and add to canvas. And like, well, those are pretty big images to work with, huh? Let's go ahead and down here on the screen, we're going to go ahead and reduce this to about, oh, let's see. Let's even make it 25% so that we can see it, so you can see it, all right? And then we also want to, okay, so I was going to tell you to move it to the far left, but it already is the far left. It's just that it's so big that it's already down to the 28-inch margin over here. So give yourself a little bit of room. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two pieces apart so they become their own little separate pattern pieces. 
So you're going to click on the shape tool and the little box. Wait for it to show up in the corner. And what you want to do is just make it big enough so that it covers the first piece. And then you want to click off the figure out what the term is, but click that off so that you can go ahead and resize it and bring it down like so. So it should cover all of the first image and then you're going to do a select all or however you do it, grab them all and we're going to slice over here in the bottom right corner. Then we let the system render And now we can take this piece off and we can take this little piece that was cut out off and we now have two pieces okay so these two pieces are just extra we don't need them so hit delete and now it comes the uh, comes in the factor of knowing your pattern size so we know that the uh, width of our pattern needs to be nine inches so simply change the width here from this whatever is in there to nine and then hit your tab key and then on this one do the same thing change it to nine get your tab key now we can kind of bring these back over so that they're going to be closer to our canvas size once we enlarge our canvas which is down here and we're going to go plus and plus and plus Hopefully now we can see all of our pieces over here as well. Here we go. Okay. So we can now see that our images are, they are pretty close to a point that they are, I'm going to say they're off maybe a minuscule, it should be 2.48, 2.5, and this is, this should be 9 by Four, it's 9 by 4.004. .04. Those little small differences will make nothing, no difference at all in your cut files, at least for this pattern. So we have those two pieces done and you are ready if you want to, to make the beginning of your thank you pouch. Let me just show you a little uh, fun tip here so that you don't forget what pieces you're working with. Maybe you won't forget, maybe you will. Let me just show you something, a quick little tip. It may or may not be useful for you, but if you're ever dealing with um, quite a few different pattern pieces on the same canvas and you don't want to forget what they are, you can label them somewhat. So you click on your image, actually you don't even need to, but click on the text tool and type in the letter of the pattern piece. And then what you can do is come over here. If you want, you can make it something that you can see easier. Change it to a white or any color, but this is fine for now. And now we're going to copy this one. And we're going to put it over here on this piece. And we know that this piece is actually C because they come up on A and C on the page. So we'll just change this to a capital C. Okay. Now, these actually are uh, cut files. So you, don't, when you wouldn't want them to be uh, visible on your pieces when you cut them. But for now, it's just a nice visual reference to know which pieces you're dealing with. Again, if you had you know, six or seven different pieces, it's going to come in handy. So let's go ahead and we're going to group all of these any way you like. It's always different ways to do the same thing. And we're going to group them. And over here, we're going to hide this group because we're going to work on pattern piece B next. So let's go ahead and hide it by turning off or clicking the eye icon. And next we're going to hit the upload button and we're going to upload page two. Now I have uh, modified this pattern just so I could uh, show you a different way of doing things in this tutorial. It didn't affect the pattern at all, but you'll see in this case now I have moved the one inch box out of the pattern piece so that I can show you how we can resize the pattern piece using that itself. So go ahead and click on this once. We're going to click on complex.
Oh, I hit continue, sorry. And it defaults to the magic wand to remove the background. And this particular pattern piece doesn't have the footer. I didn't really do it on purpose, but it's a good example of that. If it was there, you would cut it off, but it's not, so we don't have to worry about that. So. And next we're going to click Apply and Continue. And select the cut image and upload. Select the upload file and add to the canvas. We're adding to our exist existing canvas, so we're basically creating um, all of the pieces we need to make the one pattern. So again, this pattern piece comes in super, super huge, no big deal. Go ahead and reduce it down here to about 25% so we can see it. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, like before, is we need to separate these pieces. So we'll just use this little one inch box as our first shape cut, if you will, or slice. So click on shapes, click on the little box, any box will do. Bring it over here. We're going to unlock it so that it can be any size that we need it to be. Once the system renders, sorry about that. Sometimes computers don't cooperate. We have to be patient. All right. So once we have sized our box, we just wanted to go over that box, but not touch this piece. And then we're going to do a grouping or a select all, and we're going to do slice. So we're slicing the little one inch box, which currently is not one inch, out of this pattern piece. So now, hopefully, hopefully, we can now drag these pieces away. And we are left with two separate pieces, and this is all just garbage. So we can select and delete. So now we have our quasi one inch box. So now instead of clicking on this image and resizing it through the height and width, we're going to resize it based on the one inch box. And this is really handy when you have pattern pieces that are not exactly, you know, a perfect or near perfect rectangle. So we're going to select all and we're going to group them. And then of this group, you're going to hide the larger piece over here in your little layers panel. And then you're going to click on your one inch box, even though right now it's actually four inches. Now what we're going to do is change it here in this box to one inch. Hit tab and it's going to resize it hopefully to another to one inch. Yay it did. And now you can come over here and you're going to click on the group and you can see go ahead and turn on this piece. And last but last least, you can increase your canvas viewing window to back to 100%. And now we can see that we have, we'll have to ungroup them so we can play with them separately. We have our one inch box. Great. We don't need it anymore. And we have pattern piece B here, which should be nine inches by about 5.5. It's 8.97. It probably wouldn't matter, but we know that this should be nine inch and you want to have that be consistent. So go ahead and just make this nine inches. Hit tab and now it's actually the correct size, nine by 5.5. So knowing the measurements of the pattern piece is very helpful if you want to be as specific as possible. It was off such a small amount, I promise you it would have made a difference, but since the other pieces were nine inches, let's go ahead and make this one as well. So now what we can do is we can bring this piece over here. Let's go ahead and look at our other two pieces that were hidden. Hopefully now they're not.
This is way over here because the piece was used to be really huge. That's what happens sometimes. Okay. okay. And now we have our pieces. Now, if you wanted to add the B to this, you could. So we know it's A, C, and B. But, all right, and the last thing I want to show you today in this particular video is a fun shortcut that I learned from somebody in our group, and that is how to create pattern pieces for your stabilizer and your fleece. So I like to have these pieces cut about a half inch uh, smaller than the pattern pieces. So what you do is you click on the offset tool. We're going to change this value to 0.5. Click on the corner version. We want to make a difference, really, and hit apply. Let it render, and you now have a pattern piece for your top piece for A. Same thing for this piece. Hit offset. You should remember the last value. I say it should, but it didn't, right? 0. 0.50. Apply. Click on this piece. Offset. 0. 0.50. Apply. And now, if you want to, you have these nice pieces for where you can cut these for your stabilizers. So like I said, for the fleece and for the deck of the light. So I thought that was a really fun little tip that we learned from somebody in our group. It's always uh, nice that we can share things that we learn and, um, and then I can share them with you. So I'll put this all back. Make sure you save your files. If you want to make a, uh, a thank you pouch using these SVG files that you created. So that is that today. I hope you have fun learning along with me and um, I will talk to you all soon. So have a great day. Bye.